guess this is the end of the road. Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it all started when I met this guy on the street one day. A survivor just like me. We became friends and the two of us made so much progress together. But then one night, as I came back from my trip to search for gasoline, he was nowhere to be found. And this is what happened later on in the story. I waited almost an entire night on December 18th for my friend to return so I could share my date with him. About the things I did, the gas I found, and most importantly, the return of my hearing. I was excited. Excited to be able to have a normal conversation with him. I sat on the floor trying to write down a list of things I needed to do while keeping an ear open for any noise outside the mansion that might suggest his return. But as hours went by, all I could hear was the wind and the crackling of the wooden floor. Man, is he alright? Knowing that my bald-headed friend isn't coming back anytime soon, I thought I would make myself useful by starting to pull out all the overgrown weeds and vines around the garage. And the result is a much cleaner and more spacious looking place. With, well, just me in it. On the morning of the 19th, I grabbed one of the spare gas cans and went on another hunt for supplies. More gas wouldn't hurt. Nails would be great. The more, the better. And transportation. A nice truck would serve me well. I decided to pick up where I left off last time at the Congo building. I know I could choose a new area and start fresh, especially given the not-so-pleasant time I had dealing with the zombies pouring out of the condo complex. However, when dealing with a situation where I have to search for multiple things at once, I prefer to keep things consistent. That way, I can at least minimize the chance of getting distracted from my goal. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen. I mean, I get distracted almost all the time, but personally, I find it easier to manage this way. It was relatively quiet outside the condo on the streets, evidence that I had killed a good portion of the horde occupying the area. So naturally, I went inside the closest unit to try and get my hands on some goodies. I checked the kitchen first and found some rotten vegetables in the fridge. Nothing to see here. As I was reaching for the garbage can, I was startled by noises coming from outside the window. Three zombies climbed their way inside. I sprung into action, but was too sloppy with my footing and ended up backing myself into the fridge. One zombie took advantage of my mistake and managed to penetrate my bulletproof vest and shirt, wounding my stomach. The sharp pain triggered my fight or flight instinct, so I took to the doorway, looking to fight them in an open area. Luckily for me, the wound was not a bite or infected. So I disinfected it with a few drops of bourbon and bandaged it with a piece of ripped sheet. Shortly after, I made my way back inside. I removed the broken glass pieces from both windows next to the doorway as an extra precaution. In case I got overwhelmed and failed to remember that there was no door behind the vines. You might laugh now, but never underestimate the effect of small visual obscurity in a life and death situation. I stuffed all the canned food from the kitchen into my bag and moved up to the second floor. There, I found some training materials and books that I haven't seen before. Then, I topped up my water bottles in the bathroom and moved on to the next unit. I spent the rest of the afternoon going door to door, searching each unit in the complex. From kitchen to bedroom, rinse and repeat. It may sound boring, but this search granted me a decent number of food items that should last me a while, and one box of nails that I desperately needed. I decided to head back around 6pm, by which time the snow had already turned into a storm. The freezing wind at 60 miles per hour, combined with pebble-sized snowflakes, made the walk back to the mansion feel like forever. Back at the base, I dropped everything off and still saw no sign of my bald-headed friend. I was getting a little worried, concerned that he might be caught up somewhere, injured without shelter, while the storm rages on. He could be fine, not fine, or dead. I don't know what to think, but the thought of him lying motionless in the snow terrifies me. I need to find him. December 20th, the following day, I went back to the condo area one last time for some leftover loot. There were still a bunch of cans lying around in one of the units, but I really couldn't carry all of them, so I marked the location on the map. I managed to get more gas from a red jeep parked not far from the road, about 5 or 6 liters. Decent amount. Oh, and I finally managed to check out the quad bike. Yeah, an interesting little four-wheeler, you know. And imagine the fun I could have riding one of these. Well, unfortunately, the engine on this one is completely toasted, and the gas can was in shambles. What a shame. But right across the street from the quad bike was this walled-up open area. 
As I walked inside, I saw this half-constructed building surrounded by construction materials. You know, piles of bricks, planks, tubings, and steel beams, that kind of stuff. Also zombies. Wouldn't be the same without them. Inside this unfinished real estate wonder, I found many crates stacked inside rooms, containing things like paint, hammers, drills, and other tools that a man might have in his garage either to build things or to pretend he would. The thought of carrying them all back to my garage, placing them on the shelf and never using them again did cross my mind for a second. But it was getting late and my bag were already too heavy so I ended up just leaving them there. Now that I finally have nails, I felt it would be a good idea to make some rain collectors. You know, to capitalize on this snow that doesn't seem to want to stop. Now all I'm saying is, it's about time I come up with a new way to hydrate myself. You know, upgrading from drinking toilet water to water collected in the garbage bag. So that's what I did on the night of December 20th. I made three small rain collectors outside the garage and then worked through the night to continue patching up the exterior wall. Okay, working through the night might not be the exact description in this case. It should have been the whole night plus the entire morning of the following day. The only reason I stopped is that I managed to use up all 100 or so nails I found. I went through all the nails in just one day and it didn't feel like I had accomplished a lot. The mansion is still very much exposed in its southwest and southeast corners. But thanks to the dense forage coverage, zombies should now have a harder time trying to wander inside. Thanks to the non-stop blizzard and my 87.64 IQ, all three of my rain collector were full in just one day. So now I have a somewhat sustainable water source. Since the snow water collected by the collector isn't safe to drink straight up, I tried boiling it in an oven, and it worked wonderfully. I ran out of chores to do in the mansion around 8pm that day, so I decided to treat myself to something more stimulating and fun. Exploring a new location at night for the first time. And let me tell you, the horror I experienced that night was scarier than being forced to eat, let's say, a hundred bags of chips, okay? What happened was, I went further west and found what looked like a bar at a crossroad. As I walked inside the bar, it was pitch black. I had to squint to see where I was going. So, like a normal person, I switched on my flashlight and began rummaging through the bar trying to find food and drinks. And at some point, I walked into a room that turned out to be a bathroom. And as I turned around to look elsewhere, a zombie dressed like a bartender suddenly appeared from behind the counter and began slowly walking to the back of the bar. I fucking froze. Partly because I hadn't seen anyone behind the counter when I came in, and this guy really caught me by surprise. And the other part of my hesitation was the fear that there could be more zombies hiding in a shadowy corner somewhere else. But that's not important. The eerie part of this story is, as I stood up from where I was and walked over to where the zombie had gone, ready to take it out, it was not there. I'm talking gone, dissipated, disappeared, vanished, dissolved, dispelled, disintegrated, fate. There were no doors leading outside, no holes in the ground to fall through. Sure, there were two windows, but when was the last time you saw a zombie vault through a window unprovoked, just for fun? Even if it did, okay, let's just take a step back. Even if it did, I wasn't slow to react. I moved up just as I lost visual contact, but I didn't see anything outside the window. The harder I tried to make sense of it, the more eerie the whole thing became, so I quickly grabbed a few items from inside the counter, some food and a few bottles of wine and bourbon, and got out of there like a three-year-old who just wet his pants. The following morning, I went back, hoping to retrieve all the remaining beer and wine I had left behind. I was still a bit traumatized by what I had seen at night and decided to check out that window to see where it leads. But as soon as I got to the right side of the bar, a huge horde appeared in the distance. Suddenly, the memory of me standing over that window, waving the flashlight around like an idiot, came to my mind. Had I made one wrong move, I could have accidentally summoned the whole horde to the bar. And that zombie I saw probably did just vault through the window due to the influence of the horde's migration. Now, a choice needs to be made here. Do I take on the horde and kill every single one of them in this area so I can advance further, searching for supplies and possibly clues or tracks suggesting the whereabouts of my bald-headed friend, or do I turn back and go somewhere else? 
Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. What felt like a hundred kills later, I was exhausted, paranoid, and covered in sticky zombie blood with an indescribable odor. The horde occupying the area was way larger than I had anticipated, different from the normal roaming hordes I had faced before. The coherence range for this one seemed too expensive and their numbers far greater. In my mind, that could only mean one thing. I was getting close to something or somewhere. The high concentration of zombies is a sign. One that suggests there is some type of facility nearby. One that people couldn't easily enter or exit before the apocalypse. And judging from all the zombies I killed that wore military uniform and combat helmets, there is likely a military camp or control center nearby. And what do military camp and control center have in abundance? Guns, ammunition, and military equipment. I've only shot a gun once in my lifetime, twice if you count shooting a bag of chips as shooting. In my defense, that bag of chips looked really suspicious, okay? All I did was point the tip of the gun at a bag and then pull the trigger. I mean, a fish could do that. But all I'm saying is, it doesn't take an expert to see the importance of having guns in the zombie apocalypse world. But getting to the military base while taking on god knows how many zombies is no small task, so I came up with a two-step plan. Step 1. Clear out as many zombies in the area as possible and at the same time get a rough idea of where the base might be. Step 2. Once the location is confirmed, eliminate the zombies inside the military base, grab the guns and bring them back to the mansion. And yes, it wasn't the brightest idea I ever had and it's more like a to-do list than a plan, but you get the idea. For the next two days, I roamed the area doing groundwork and to sum it up, I wasn't doing things as quickly and effectively as I should have. Part of it was due to the sheer number of zombies. I was being chased almost all the time. The other part was my urge to get inside every new building I saw. One out of five times, it will be something good on the other end. Like this auto repair shop I found that had tons of brand new auto parts. Other times, it will be something pointless. Like trying to bring back a water dispenser I found 50 miles away from home. It was like, instead of going to the store 5 minutes away from home to pick up some batteries so the smoke detector would stop beeping, I chose to ask my retired neighbor if he had spares. And after a tour of his garage, a look around his backyard, a small presentation about his 1966 Shelby Cobra, and lots of chit chat in between, we found out that his spare battery, bought 10 years ago, was already dead. Fast forward to the Christmas day. I was still searching for the military base but felt very confident that it was hiding behind a fenced area deep inside the trees. So armed with a lead pipe, a police baton, an almost broken crowbar, and zero food in my bag, I marched inside. The first thing that caught my attention was a watchtower in the north corner. It was protected by a thick co-pad controlled security door, but with the window already smashed, I got inside rather easily. Inside the tower, there were two weapon cases containing one stack of 223 ammo, one stack of 12 gauge ammo, a weapon light attachment, a big sniper rifle, and a service revolver. From what it looked like, I have come to the right place. I bagged the ammo and guns and immediately felt their weight. Ooh, that's heavy. We're not going to be able to get everything back in one go. After getting out of the tower, I fell along the fence and ventured further into the woods. Advancing in the dense forest during a zombie apocalypse is pretty tricky. Not only did the trees block a large portion of my vision, hindering my ability to detect incoming danger, but they also heavily reduced my movement speed. Additionally, the nature of obstruction provided by the trees often led to a situation where both the zombie and I would notice each other's presence at close proximity. Yikes. Um, you know what? You look really busy here. So I'm just gonna get out of your hair and then head back to where I came from. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. You've got to appreciate the amount of good secondhand stuff you get from these forest folks. I was really lucky with the loot. It was as if God knew I had a revolver, so he sent a zombie with a speed loader to me. And a bigger backpack. And a whole set of ghillie suits. Okay, now that I think about it, it might just be because I was close to a military base and I killed a lot of zombies here. Uh, like a lot of them. They just don't stop coming. And this big open area that I'm walking on right now has to be a wrong way of some kind. Because just look at this. I'm not even at the halfway point. 
At this point, I've been inside the wrong way slash forest for almost two days. I have no food, I'm exhausted, sweaty, and the ammo I picked up is crushing my back. December 26, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I saw it. Another watchtower. One that looks exactly the same as the one I found 8,000 feet to the east. I rushed over, excited to see what was inside the weapon case. Little did I know, finding this watchtower and the items inside would mark the beginning of my most horrifying and bone-chilling experience ever on King's Mouth. You see, the stuff I found in the locker was very good. Weapon attachments, guns, and a breaching tool which at the time I thought would work the same way as a sledgehammer. Oh, the joy I felt when I found it. I wanted it all, so I just put everything in my bag, fully aware that I would be over encumbered and it would slow me down like a turtle on dry land, but I didn't care. Naturally, I became too heavy after I did all that and had no choice but to pause the search and start walking all the way back to the mansion just to secure my loot, as if someone was going to show up and rob me of it. Soon after I left the watchtower, the sun began to set, and darkness crept in. So I picked up my pace and started jogging. Not the smartest decision, consider I was already exhausted from fighting zombies and low on energy for god knows how long. The result? I got really tired really quickly, and the weight of the bag felt like carrying a full-grown man on my shoulder. But with all things considered, as long as I followed the way I came, everything should be fine, right? Well, that's true when you can see where you're going, but when you can't, you probably already know where this is going. I became lost around 9pm and could no longer jog. Trying to get myself back on track was futile due to the low visibility. I couldn't find the trail of corpses that I had created. Starting to panic, I decided to head to the north side of the runway and simply follow the fences. The decision proved to be successful, as I eventually managed to find the watchtower near my original entry point, I was just steps away from safety. But then, like a classic horror movie cliche, two shadowy figures emerged from the outside. I had been spotted. Oh no. I see one over there. Just gotta... You gotta be kidding me. This is going to suck. I felt the pulse, from my toes to the tips of my eyebrows. My hair stood on end, and my heart started pounding. I tried to run, but it was pointless. I was drained. It was a miracle that my legs could still support my torso. I took to the trees, trying to slow them down, but it wasn't enough. No matter how many trees I let them through, it was only a matter of time before they caught up again. There was no running away from this, so I grabbed my baton, turned back around, and attempted to fight them. My arms were not cooperating. My strikes were weak, feeble. At some point, I managed to push one of them down, but it would take forever to kill them this way. I was out of options. All I could do was keep walking, as it was the only reason I was still alive. Is this the end? The sad life of Donnie Beach. Dying because of his greed. I should have never picked up all that loot. I should have never come here to find some stupid military base. I should have never let him go all by himself. I should have said no to Rhodey about coming to this island. Oh, the regrets. The unreconciled. They come together piece by piece like a movie. One without closure and one without a happy ending. You might think my story ends here, that I eventually collapsed due to exhaustion and had my stomach ripped open by zombies. I thought so too. But just as I was about to give up and accept my fate, my left hand came in contact with a metal object strapped to my waist. I looked down on it, and there was the revolver I had found in one of the watchtowers, sitting in my holster and emitting a soft purplish shine under the moonlight. <sighs> Shit. Is this is gonna work. Can I even hit them? God, this thing's hard to control. You can do this. Just aim for the head. 